It's time again for that cover price top 10. Guys, we're going back four years. This is pre-COVID numbers. All right, guys, we're going to get into this top 10. I'm really excited about this one because I always talk about the market going up, going down, and everybody thinks the market's going down, down, down. Well, yeah, the market's down from our highs of 2021, 2022, but I've been telling people a lot of stuff is still up from 2019, 2020, these pre COVID numbers. This is going to be a great list so you kind of can see everything we've talked about for the past couple years, FOMO books, variant books, real keys, all this stuff's going to be covered in this video and you're going to see which books hold value. All right, before we get into all that, you know what to do. Follow me on all the social media stuff, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, whatnot. Everything is very Gary underscore comics. Big stuff coming from New York Comic Con. I will be dropping not one, but two exclusives for New York Comic Con. Give me a follow over on Whatnot because I'm going to be dropping a few of them during New York Comic Con on Whatnot, just, not just at the booth. Also, if you're into variants, guys, check out MutantBeaverComics.com. Use the code Gary10. Get yourself 10% off your purchase. Also, cover price in the description down below there is a discount code for it this is their list you also want to give them a follow on youtube because they're also putting content out as well Woo! that's everything let's get into this list again guys we're going back four years i'm really excited about this one this list again comes to us from from our friends over at cover price let's start with number 10 this is Thor number one. July 2019, Natalie Portman was confirmed to return to the MCU as Thor in Thor Love and Thunder. One month later, her first cover appearance began cooling a bit, along with her variants. However, it still hit the list for $30 raw and a high of $262 for a CGC 9.8. Four years later, Natalie Portman... Natalie's performance in Love and Thunder has come and gone, and she presumably died at the end of the film, taking all hopeful speculation along with her. Today, Raw sell for a boost in price at $34, yet was a huge bust in price with a current 9.8 fair market value of $84. Yet it's interesting that Raw's not only held value, but have gone up in four years. This could be due to hopeful collectors on her possible return after appearing in a post credit scene where she's welcomed into Valhalla. The potential to return in the future as Valkyrie is a strong possibility. With Raw's that high and 9.8 so low, maybe now's a great time to pick up a 9.8. So, this is a book that there's a lot of them out there. I actually love this book. I actually love this run. If you haven't read Jason Aaron's Thor run, I mean, it goes pretty far back. Start with God of Thunder and it rolls right into this. I think a huge uh, part of this book going down as much as it did is because Love and Thunder was terrible. Some of you guys are going to attack me in the comments like you did last time. Most of you are probably going to agree with me because that is easily the worst MCU movie. And I have always been holding out that Thor... Uh, Iron Man 3 was the worst. A lot of you people, uh, I should say, a lot of people think that the second Thor was the worst. Me, personally, I'm Iron Man 3. I thought that was the worst MCU movie. Uh, uh, until now, it's Love and Thunder. Hands down. I don't think it's debatable. You guys fight amongst yourselves in the chat, in the comment section. Let's get down to number nine. This is Absolute Carnage, number one, the Del Otto Cult of Carnage 1 in 25. With this 1 in 25 variant, it performed well and held at ratio prices for most for the most part. It saw a high raw sale of $35 with no record of a 9.8 sale as it was such a new book. Four years later, this book appears to have cemented itself as a flavor of the week. These days, raw copies sell for a bust of $10. While you could view the CGC 9.8 price at $47 as a boost with no prior sales data. Yet that's pretty much the raw value plus the cost of grading. While the majority of fans love Del Otto's covers, the sheer volume of variants available saturated the market. Not only that, it's not the only Del Otto variant to choose from, but if you're a fan of the character and the work of Del Otto or just a fan of this run, it's quite readily available for a good price. I remember... And, and it still kind of happens today, like the, some of these ratio variants go for crazy money and then boop, 
come back down to earth. FOMO, guys, don't worry about grabbing it the second it comes out. I always, I think I've said this in previous videos. You, you know, if you pass on 10 of these crazy variants, I would say eight out of the 10, you're going to be able to buy for significantly lower than what they were selling for when you wanted it. Just wait. You're probably going to miss out on one or two that are going to continue to go up or maintain a high value. Okay, it happens. But I'd rather be patient, grab them when they come down and, you know, save some money. And if you want those other expensive ones, well, you saved so much money on the previous uh, eight that you can grab those two and still be ahead of the game. Let's go down to number eight. This is House of X number two, Character Decades variant. Here's a House of X again. Which was a hot commodity in 2019 as it rehashed the origin of Moira McTaggart, the love interest of old Charles Xavier and had a cameo of the original Horseman of Apocalypse. While it sold less volume than other books in our top 10 at the time, it jumped to a bigger than expected price. It achieved a high raw sale of $25 and a high, and a high graded 9.8 sale a month later for 60. This all occurred right after the Disney Fox merger when everyone was hyped for the introduction of the X-Men and potentially Moira along with it. Well, four years later, we're still waiting for that introduction. Today, raw copies are seeing sales that fall into bus territories at $7, while graded books are NA with no 9.8 graded sales on record since 2019. If and when X-Men gets going again, this book may be a sneaky riser. In fact, all of the House of X books have some long-term potential if it does, these prices can't be beat. I always like to say, if you can grab a 9.8 key, mo modern, key, first appearance, origin, like like a, like a real key issue, um, it's probably a good sale, a, a good good purchase because it's going to cost you 5 to 10 bucks for a book like that and then cost you 30 to $35 to grade it and you don't know if you're getting a 9.8. You might as well spend the extra buck, couple bucks, go get yourself a 9.8. Let's go down to number seven. This is The Boys number one. Four years ago, The Boys season one was just released on Prime and was met with fantastic reviews and fanfare. Their first appearance in The Boys number one saw some fantastic aftermarket movement in response. It quickly hit high raw sales of $80, CGC 9.8 sales with highs of 375. Four years later, the show has been a massive success. Season four is set to air in early 2024 and a spinoff show, Gen V, releasing in just a few months. Today, a raw copies sell for a boost price of $100, while graded copies are also enjoying a boost at $400. There have been massive peaks and small valleys in the past four years with a high of $700 for a 9.8 upon the release of season three in 2022. With three whole seasons of the show airing and pushing the limits of what a superhero show can do, it's no surprise that this first appearance is still holding value and seeing jumps in price around each season. With steady growth over the years, this will most likely see another jump in value in 2024 with season four. Here we go. Our first real key of the list. 2019, hype behind it, and it popped to 375. This is our first real, real key. Thor 1 is kind of a key, but this one is the big one so far on our list, right? 2019, pre-COVID, hit highs of 375. Well, look where we are in 2019. 23. It's $400 and a 9.8. So even with the market coming back down, this true key is still higher than its 2019 price. This is exactly what I've been talking about in previous videos and live sales and everything else. Overall, the market's down from 2021, 2022. But if you look at since 2019, 2020, we're still up. And I noticed at Terrificon, people were buying raw stuff, graded stuff like crazy because I reprice my books after each or before each show. So I'm current prices, right? People were grabbing books left and right because it has come down so much. But again, it's still up from 2019. If all this makes sense, I'm probably just rambling. Let's go down. Let's go down to number six. This is Absolute Carnage number one, the Stegman premiere variant. With this being a one per store variant, we were surprised to not only see so many copies sold, but that it also overtook the standard cover. It had a high raw sale of $60, which took the majority of the fans 
fan base by surprise. When folks hear one per store, they tend to take a harder look, especially with the hype built around this event. But four years later, this book has tumbled back down to earth, seeing a bust in the raw sale price of around $10. Graded sales haven't fared much better with any to compare to from the past. As it was such a new book, recent 9.8 sales from earlier this year come in at a decent $96. There's not clear speculation in this book, so it's time may have passed. However, this one may be just be worth picking up. It's a nice looking raw for a nice looking raw copy, taking a chance, you know, at that price. Let's all learn from this too. Don't spec, don't grab FOMO on major event books. Those seem to get crazy and then come down too. If you can be patient, this kind of goes along with the, the powers of X, house of X, whatever we talked about earlier, the Moira book. So just keep that in mind. Let's go down to number five. We're going to talk about a real book now. This is Spawn number one. Four years ago, Spawn was selling like crazy week after week. Raw copies hit a high high sale of $20 while a CGC 9.8 would set you back about 100. Now let's jump ahead four years. Spawn is still selling like crazy week after week. In the past four years, the Todd Father announced a new live action film, video game appearances, as well as multiple new comic series. Due to all the traction, it's performing very well with a boost in raw sales at $45 while CGC 9.8 copies are enjoying a boost of 160 as well. Spawn is still incredibly popular, seeing a ton of attention at San Diego Comic-Con this year. He's the best-selling and most steady aftermarket comic book, so he's not going anywhere anytime soon. See, this is a real book. Granted, there's a million copies of Spawn number one out there, but it's still being bought and sold at a crazy rate and... These, I think, were about $250 in 9.8s during the boom, COVID years, down to $160, but $160 still above the 2019 price at $100. This is a real book versus, again, those FOMO books. This is a great list. I'm loving it. Let's get to number four. This is Mr. Miracle number five. On August 6th of 2019, Tom King posted an image of this book on Twitter saying, currently rereading for a thing I'm working on. Of course, that was enough to move copies. This tease drove this book to have a high sale of $53 with a high sale for a CGC 9.6 of 200, all within days of said post. Four years later, we can now see that it held steady for a time before King revealed the film had been canceled. Despite that cancellation, raw sales have held and even went up a bit to current near mint fair market value of $49.00. Graded 9.6 copies saw a boost to $288. That's a healthy increase, making this an interesting book for those who have faith in Mr. Miracle and his surrounding cast in the future James Gunn DCU. My, uh, this is again, same exact thing. A real book. I mean, granted, this is, uh, I think this is Bronze Age, but still a real book. 2019 with a boom, right? With, with a boom, $200 in a 9.6, right? Boom goes away because Tom King's movie was canceled. 2023 pricing, still higher than 2019. I'm just saying, the market is down from the highs, but still up from 2019. Let's get down to number three. I'm loving this list. I hope you guys are too. Let's let's get to number three. This is X-Force number two. The second appearance of Deadpool was a surprise to see on this list. Granted, with the success of Deadpool, this isn't hard to imagine. It hit a high raw sale of around $7 with a CGC 9.8 coming in at 80. Since then, the first appearances of Deadpool have grown out of reach for many with a chunk of fans opting to move to this book. That has led to a boost for raw copies, now enjoying a high of $15, while graded copies could arguably be seen as a boost as well for remaining incredibly steady 9.8s have also held with a current fair market value of $75. Basically, we're, we're at the same price. However, a 9.9 did sell in 2022 for a massive $4,200. That's a huge premium for this very affordable key. I use the keyword key little lighthearted here for, you know, a little light here. Second appearance of Deadpool. The limelight on Deadpool peaks and valleys, often depending on what news of the day is. To see a rise in raw copies is astounding when you can consider the sheer volume of copies printed, but there are those willing to take a chance with the pristine raw copy overgraded 
often enough to drive that price up. I sell these guys for like 10, 15 bucks all day in my boxes. X-Force number two, good. It's a good cover. It is the second appearance of Deadpool. Technically, some people consider X-Force one the second appearance of Deadpool on the card because this card comes in X-Force number one, the polybags, where there's about five bajillion of those out there. Anyway, um, again, minor key, but look, prices are state. The graded copies are relatively the same. Raw copies are a boost. We're talking about a somewhat real book, not a FOMO variant. Just keep that in mind while we go to number two. This is Moon Knight number one. If you can't afford a Werewolf by Night 32, then this is a fine second prize. In August of 2019, Moon Knight was announced on the MCU slate as a Disney Plus show. This more affordable first solo ongoing series instantly hit record sales of $45 for Near Mint Copy, had a high sale of $235 for CGC 9.8. Four years later, the Moon Knight series has come and gone on Disney+. Plus. It was mostly well-received. Fans specifically en- enjoyed Oscar Isaac's depiction of Moon Knight, the surprise appearance of the Scarlet Scarab, and well-depicted Khonshu, who first appeared in this book. Yet a year prior to its release, market values went insane, with 9.8s hitting highs of $13.25 and roughly around 100 sales between that and $900, with No sight of Moon Knight in recent MCU projects. This first solo series has fallen in price, currently sitting at $55 for a near mint. Highs, oh, near mint raws and $300 for 9.8. Now, yes, that was a massive fall from the all-time highs. However, when we look at where it was four years ago, these prices are still a boost in value. If you go back another few months from August 2019 pre-announcement, near mint raws sold for $25. 25 dollars nine eights were going for 175 the mcu definitely breathed life into moon knight books with a nice return on investment even with that drop in value moving forward you can't go wrong with picking up a raw or graded copy at its current value there's still plenty of potential left in the fist of Kanchu. i just said it i just talked about it this entire list again same example here We don't have to go over it. We're going to get into number one. But before we do, again, guys, make sure you check out in the description down below a discount code for a cover price subscription. You're going to want it. It's an absolutely amazing, incredible tool. And you can put your comic books in there, see the value of it. It, It's just, it's awesome. It's great. I use it. All right. And with that, let's get down to number one. This is House of X number two, the Putri Connecting Variant getting a lot of attention for both its story and solid aftermarket sales. This had a high raw sale of $25, but was too new to have any graded sales. Four years later, and this book is surprisingly very challenging to find ungraded. Raw prices have effectively held in four years with a near mint fair market value of $20. This could be part of it being a connecting cover and needing both covers to complete the set. While neither a bust nor a boost, this book essentially has held its value over the past four years. Guys, I just talked about it. These FOMO variants, these new variants. Look, if you didn't buy it then and you waited, it's the same price now. Think of all those other ones. If you bought them during the hype when everybody was scrambling to get them, you'd be down right now. I mean, this list is just basically covering every example I talk about over the past couple years. It's fantastic. This is a great list. I like going back four years. Let's just talk about this list one last time here. Four years later, this list featured a mix of busts and boosts. Granted, there is nothing earth shattering, yet it's nice to know values are holding for the most part four years later. Those busts were primarily books propelled by hype or manufactured market scarcity. These factors typically don't bode well for longevity. Some, however, are proud boosts like Spawn, The Boys, Moon Knight, despite having prior content released or the tease of it soon. And while down from all-time highs, it's important to remember your own personal return on investment. If you bought these books at the market height four years ago, you're still doing fine. Those market heights were only a tiny fraction of copies sold. They often only had a few weeks to months of big traction. So current prices are probably where they should be. Many of this list have developed into mainstay books that have reached a wider audience and resonated 
four years is an eternity in this hobby. An entire snapshot of the before, during, and after of the comic book boom playing out before us. These trends are fascinating and help bring to light what folks should look out for. Guys, I love this list. I hope you did too. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out coverprice.com, their movers and shakers list, and come back next time because we're going to be going back one year and doing this all over again. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep it comics.